part one, we showed you how to fit grip as an underlay, so now we're gonna show you how to fit and trim your carpet. Our carpet is woven backed, but most of what we're gonna show you is also relevant to fitting a felt back carpet as well. You're gonna need one of these carpet fitting kits consisting of a carpet stretcher, a carpet tucker, and a carpet trimming knife. If you already have some of these items, you can buy the other items individually. Having already worked out the area you need to cover in part one, now you're ready to cut the carpet to the approximate size, including any allowances for final trimming. Before you make any cuts, check that the way you are cutting it will enable the carpet to be laid with a pile facing the same direction as the pile of any adjacent carpet in another room of the same type if they have to match. Otherwise, the carpets may look completely different. It's always easier to carpet in an empty room, so clear as much space as possible so you don't have to move furniture around as you fit the carpet. If the carpet is patterned, check that the pattern is aligned with the main wall or main focal point in the room. Also check that the carpet is positioned so that there's enough carpet to fit right into any alcove and into the doorway. Once you're happy with the alignment position of the carpet, go over the main area using both feet in a shuffling step action to work any ripple or bumps to the edges. At each corner, push the carpet as far as you can into the corner and cut the excess carpet vertically from the corner so that it's more flexible and easier to push into the corner. Take care not to make the vertical cut too long. Make the cut in stages if necessary and ease the carpet into the corner between the cuts. Fold the carpet over and cut the excess down to 100 millimeters, ready for trimming, but make sure you don't cut through to the carpet underneath. Now stretch the carpet, hooking it into the gripper and trimming it, and remember to wear gloves. Start in the corner that is diagonally opposite the doorway. Use the carpet stretcher to hook the carpet onto the gripper for approximately one meter in each direction. You'll need to apply some pressure downward on the carpet stretcher and kick the padded end with your knee to force the carpet forward and tuck it in the edge with a carpet chisel. On the longest side of the room, stretch the carpet into the opposite corner and use the stretcher to hook the carpet onto the gripper for approximately one meter or three feet. Then staying on the longest side, hook the carpet onto the gripper between the two corners. Now move to the shorter side of the room and stretch the carpet into the corner opposite the corner you started in and hook it onto the gripper. Once the carpet is hooked, work along the remainder of the shorter side and hook the carpet onto the gripper. Then stretch the carpet into the corner that is diagonally opposite the corner that you started in and hook it onto the gripper along one wall only for approximately one meter. You can now hook the carpet to the gripper along the remaining longest side and then the remaining short side. At this stage, the carpet should be fully hooked on and free from ripples. If there are any ripples, unhook the carpet and restretch it, then rehook it back onto the gripper. To trim the carpet, fold it back on itself and crease it so that it's tight against the skirting board. And use a utility knife with a sharp blade to cut the carpet backing along the folded edge, a distance of approximately eight millimeters from the face of the skirting. Again, take care not to push so hard that you cut the carpet underneath the fold. Once you've trimmed the carpet, use a carpet tucker to push the cut edge into the gap between the skirting board and the gripper. Repeat the process until all of the trimming and tucking except the doorway is complete. In the doorway, trim the carpet around the architrave and door frame so that the carpet is slightly overlapping the threshold bar. Then cut the carpet so that it ends just before the middle of the threshold bar on the room side of the bar using a cutting board under the carpet so that you don't damage the threshold bar as you cut. Make sure you get the right kind of threshold bar that works with the floor surface of the adjoining room. Once it's cut, use the carpet tucker or a flat blade scraper and hammer to tuck the cut edge into the threshold bar. And that's your carpet laid. For more ideas and know-how, visit DIY.com.